One of the things that made Kevin unique is he had incredible vision. I think he could envision himself being an NBA player one day, which is why he was thinking to himself, this is what I need to do. You know, I started working with Kevin when he was 15 years old. Kevin taught me every bit as much as I ever taught him. I mean, the lessons, and I look back on some of the stories and, and things that I remember from him, he didn't know that he was teaching me something. So the first time I saw Kevin play, he was playing for Oak Hill at the time. I watched him play for about five minutes, and it became crystal clear a few things. One, this kid loves to play the game of basketball. He was playing his tail off, but he was smiling the entire time. Two, he's fundamentally sound. His footwork and his shooting mechanics are pristine. I mean, for a 15 year old, this kid has, I mean, he's, he's developed his skills. Three, he has a really, really high basketball IQ. He understands the cerebral nature of the game to the level that most coaches do. And this is when he's 15. So it was clear to me that the only thing that would prevent him from being a great college player and then eventually an NBA player was lack of strength and power. Well, that's exactly what I wanted. That's what I did. I helped players get stronger and gain weight. So uh, I started reaching out to Kevin and his wonderful mom, Wanda, and, and starting to say, look, you need to let your son come in for some workouts. And very understandably, they were cautious. It took about three months of convincing before she finally said, Kevin can come in for a workout. And we went to, it used to be called the run and shoot, met him over there. And now, I mean, I was, I was hyped up. I mean, this was a, a potential McDonald's all American coming in for a workout. This is everything that I'd ever wanted as a coach. And I absolutely hammered him. I mean, within 30 minutes, Kevin was laying in a pile on the floor and he was sweating profusely and his muscles were twitching. So he didn't say two words the entire workout. So I didn't know whether or not he even liked it. And I, I just asked him, and I just remember as serious as can be, he looked up and said, no coach, I didn't, but I know this is the stuff I need to do to make it to the NBA, so when can I see you again? And I remember being blown away that a 15 year old had the maturity to realize that he was gonna have to make a change and that that change was gonna come with a tremendous amount of mental, physical, and emotional discomfort. But he was willing to make that sacrifice because what he wanted to play in the NBA, he wanted so badly that he was willing to do that. I think he could envision himself being an NBA player one day, which is why he was thinking to himself, this is what I need to do. That yes, I'm better than most high school kids now, but that's not good enough for me. Because next year when I go to, to college, and then if I go to the NBA after that, I won't be heads and shoulders above everyone else. I won't be naturally more athletic or more skilled because everyone at those levels is athletic and skilled. So I think he was able to see down the line that this was an investment that, that he needed to make. Thankfully, I had a one in a million type player that said, yeah, I need a butt kicking like this often. So that began a nice relationship between Kevin and I for the next couple of years of working him out. And I think that he realized that I love this game so much that coming in a few times a week and being severely uncomfortable is a small price to pay if that's the ticket that's required to get me where I wanna go. You know, most kids are looking for the shortcut. Most kids are saying, you know, how can I sidestep coming in and lifting weights and still get where I want to go? And Kevin understood that he had to go through it. The, the fact that Kevin was like, no, I didn't like that workout was some humble pie that I needed to eat because then I was much more strategic in our future workouts to say, okay, I need to meet him in the middle, never to push him over. I pushed him over that first day. And you know, you don't come back from that. Thankfully he did, but it's take them to the edge of where they're severely uncomfortable and then start to build from that because the edge will start to get further and further away each time as they build up this tolerance for discomfort. I met Alan when I was a junior at, uh, at Oak Hill Academy. Uh, I met him one day, he just he told me that I needed to work out with him. It'd be good for me and uh, you know, I did it one day. It was tough, it was, uh, it was tough. And, uh, but I, I continued to do it and continued to get, uh, get bigger and uh, got better, got, gained a lot of weight. You know, uh, he was a very you know, influential person in my life for those two or three years. And, you know, he helped me out on and off the court. 